in a severe storm. Um, I have such a system. Oh. How does it yeah. behave, and does it eventually melt? Or well, what that? happens, the principal issue is what kind of a control system you use. If snow piles, if it's coming down fast and snow forms a, you know, a cover over the sensor, the system stops. And that's an issue that, you know, you, you may have more um, control system options than we did when we installed ours. Mm -hmm. Generally, if there, it keeps up with four, up to four inches of snow. Over four inches, you're probably going to have to do some kind of removal anyway. If it stops at four inches, it catches up after a few hours. Mm -hmm. Mostly what interrupts it is electrical. That is, it loses power because the control is covered or something else in the system needs a little bit of attention in order to Now, when was yours it. installed, Ryan? Um, You've had it for a while. Yeah. 12 to 14 years. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a lot of time. So there may be new. And we had a little bit of difficulty mm -hmm. early on and replaced a portion of it, but the majority of the system is the same, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's worked well. Um, you know, I mean, we, we had a problem with ice forming in the shadow of the house, it eliminated that completely. Mm -hmm. And the other benefit to that um, is that we don't have to use a lot of salt, so that area where the two benches are now as you're walking in from the parking lot can grow better plants mm -hmm. because they won't be salted <laughs> yeah, all the time in the winter. Happens. So we have more options for that. Yeah, I use so little salt that I have to buy it fresh every year mm -hmm. if I want any. Because it hardens in the moisture. Oh sure. Yeah. So, you know, I I can't use last year's mm -hmm. salt. And it will keep it off the loose. We also too. talked in the committee about how it's it's a safe system for things like freezing rain, mm -hmm. which yeah. um, absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. you wouldn't shovel for that. You might not even salt for it, but and it, that can cause a lot more yeah. safety hazards. Exactly. Where mm -hmm. a, right, a system like this could prevent that. Now the that. pavers also cut way down on that problem too. Yeah. That's and true. then, Heather, you also pointed out that there's another save cost saving potentially is that when we do have to salt, salt comes into the, to the building itself and starts to really degrade mm -hmm. the, the flooring. Yeah, and so we save, right. we save on and replace the flooring by doing this as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and, still Chicago winter, and right. you're going to have some storms that won't, that, that no system will right, keep handle. up. Yeah. But, and then one thing, we, someone you cited also, I thought, said that, that things have changed in the last 10 years mm -hmm. in terms of making the, the systems more efficient and, um, and what, what that means, I, we don't know. And obviously this might be more of an industrial-sized versus home-sized system that might also make a difference right. in terms of snow yeah. removal or snow elimination capacity. Yeah, I get frequent, frequent information from Commonwealth Edison about the fact that I'm using more power. <laughs> and it's just because of the fact that in the wintertime, the system comes on. Mm -hmm. sure. Well, it's cheaper than a broken leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, less time consuming. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. So are there any more questions? Because we've got it down as an action item okay. later on to vote on going okay. to basically I, go out I only and have, just, bid package. Yeah, sorry, right? one one question I know and this if it's possible at some point to get a breakout of what the um, the bluestone cost would be versus a non blue you know, what would be a cheaper alternative, just to see that, since that's the biggest cost item in, in, in your breakdown right now, it's just to see how much the blue sure. stone's impacting that cost. Yeah, so the blue stone here is, um, I'm happy to give you that information. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, just to, as far as process goes, you know, this is a concept, um, as part of the bid package preparation, we would not just go hide in our office and crank out plans and then say, hope you like it. I mean, there would be some, right. there would be a few more meetings involved to make sure that you know, you're all comfortable with the types of improvements that are shown in there. But uh, cost updates would be part of that. And um, we would be supported by a civil engineer and a lighting engineer who would be drafting those plans and helping with permitting. Mm -hmm. So when you say public right of way, do you mean village owned right of way? Yes. So the village controls, these are village controlled streets, Wilmette Avenue and Park Ave. So they control everything between this side of the sidewalk and the curb. And we talked about pricing out the bluestone separately, <coughs> and, and they did that for the garden area. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. But the committee 
felt that the great lawn area needed the bluestone to connect with to the, the other yeah, yeah. Uh, to make it more of a holistic mm -hmm. look as well as um, it, it, it's just classier, you know, it, it right. really makes the whole space come together. Um, it is a little more expensive, but there's also the maintenance issue, which um, bluestone is easier because you can take it out like you would a carpet tile. Right. You can take out one piece of it and replace it, whereas with concrete, you, you know, that's not the case. So there were some pros and cons discussed with that as well, just to think right. about. Yeah. yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember we discussed. I, just, I was just curious again. Yeah. If it's, if, like what you're saying, if it's twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars, that's that's not big enough of a savings to make a change because of what you decided that it's that the so the, the, the maintenance is a lot cheaper. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if it's more than that, just to know. So I mean, based on the scope of services, the cost shouldn't exceed fifty-five thousand five hundred and fifty to go out to bid, correct? To prepare the bid documents. To prepare the bid documents. Yeah, based on based bid. on not the bid alternate items, based on all of the, the the base the base items. That's correct. So, for instance, if um, if the library wanted to proceed with the snow melt system, our civil engineer has provided us an additional engineering fee to design for snow melt system. So when we when we separated that bid alternate item list out, that would include engineering fees would be separate. As well. Okay, so the bid alternative items do not go out, include, are not included in the bid package when you go out? So they could be, but when we drafted the proposal, the proposal was just to do the base contract. The base contract. Yeah. Public and private. Yeah, spaces. and so you'll see that the, yeah, correct. So you'll see it, that, that number basically lines up with the 10% contingencies of both, of both areas. Okay. I agree, yeah. So is it, and I don't, it's new to me, but like, is it common for the, for somebody besides the village to cover improvements to the village property? So we talked to the village about um, the library's desires to upgrade the public rights of way. Yeah. And um, the, the village is comfortable with it so long as we um, apply for a permit. So, you know, as long as we're doing something that is uh, maintained by the library and is within... No, no, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't oh. clear, like... Shouldn't they pay for that instead of us? Well, so they are. I mean, they've paid for what's out there today, but the committee wanted to see something that was a little bit more attractive. Right. And so if we want to, if the library wants to upgrade the materials that are out there today, then that gets done at the library's cost. Um, <clears throat> but isn't that, I mean, so like to me, it just sort of raises this big question if we're, willing to spend library money to upgrade village property, then this is, I think the village ought to pay for that too. And That's this is good. an opportunity for us to have a more public conversation with the village about this $50,000 in our parking lot. So I, I, I didn't think we were gonna be spending, I, I didn't realize that part of it was spending our budget on village property. Well, it's uh, not, which I'm not conceptually opposed it's to. It's public right away. We already did that with the original yeah. bike rack. We already pay, we paid for that as well. Sure. But right. So the other thing, though, we also so keep in mind is that uh, the village's Parkway Trees program is a good is good example. They don't pay for any of that. That's the homeowner's responsibility, um, and the homeowner is responsible for maintaining the parkway in front of their residence. The issue is that. The village doesn't budget for covering those expenses. They are they operate under the assumption that even though they have right of way, you have responsibility for deciding what it's going to look like, what kind of plantings are going to be in it, as long as it's within their boundaries, and that it's your cost. So they are consistent. Whether or not we agree with their consistency is a different question. But the bottom line is that they apply the same standard on all property in the village that is in, their, in the parkways that they need to have access to. Same with sidewalks? Sidewalks yes. have a 50% share, but it's, uh, as Ron said, it's only when they have funding available. And so the committee, we reviewed this with the committee, and the committee took the position that um, even though it is technically on village or public right-of-way, the committee would like to see it seen and used as part of the library campus. And so wanted to have control over the forms and materials 
Don't get put in there. Aesthetic, yeah. If we want to control what it looks like, we pay for that. And then just one more quick thing, and then I'm, I'm done with my comments. For, um, so I know we have to vote tonight on, on what we, we will use to get your, to, the bid in motion. Do you happen to know if we were to include the snow melt system, even though it's an option, how much yeah. we'd have to add to that, your proposal? Oh, it's in there. No, the snow melt's not in. I thought the snow melt's not in the. Um, in it's the, in nine thousand seven hundred. No, 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 no. The, so sure. So I can. Yeah, yeah. I can share that. So yeah. the snow melt system, um, it's not in there, but the engineering fee to do that is four thousand dollars. Okay. So I would like. I would. I don't know how we do this, but I would like to motion that we raise the the authorization for the bid to include the snow melt and go up to sixty thousand dollars. Not to not to exceed sixty thousand dollars for the for the uh, for the bid from Tesco. Mm -hmm. Is that a motion? Yes, I'll make that a motion if it's okay. I'll second. Okay. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Oh, okay. oh, no, oh, I said, oh. A, did you have any more questions? Oh, okay. 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 It'll be an action item after. Okay. We, I have one very small detailed question. We got something from a man who said, please don't take away my dog tree. I don't know if you know <laughs> that one tree by the entryway on the right hand oh. side. Is, we, we discussed that at the, at the landscape. Right, meeting. but we didn't get any, we didn't come to any conclusion. Um, I would just like to have that kept somewhere in the forefront of what we're talking about because Wilmette is a friendly library and people feel like, you know, they can come and take a short walk and bring their dog and tie it up and run in and get a book. I mean, that's really a nice thing. You can't do that at very many libraries. And I think we'd probably get kind of strong pushback from people, the few people who do use that. So We talked about putting a dog um, tie up under a different tree. Like it's a little further from the um, entryway, uh -huh. but um, Jody brought us. Is there us another tree? And there? yeah, oh, like, okay. Like, so I think I think it's the crab apple here, which oh. unfortunately right. is where we're you know we've cited the sculpture. And right. where is that in compared to the entryway? So, so the entrance to the building is is here. Okay. So, curved part is here, and so this tree is. I think if this is the tree near the near the entrance, I, I would guess that this is the tree um, right here. This helps you. This okay. So uh -huh. here's the entrance. I, I'm assuming that this is the crab apple tree that's near the entrance. Um, but this is also um, we're um, as as a committee decided to locate the sculpture right so there's lots of other opportunities to tie up okay. right. to okay. other things there's okay. going to be other trees there's going to be um lighted bollards there's going to be other elements out there that you know i think that function can still be provided for sure near the near, near the, the entrance, entrance. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. okay yeah, yeah we, we decided we have we would make sure to accommodate those patrons in some way, but not with the crab apple tree because I of, thought maybe that got left out. Okay. okay. Well, and many times people do not have a, any way of visualizing what it will look like if it's different. <laughs> so they want to keep the element that's there now that they like because they aren't they aren't thinking forward mm -hmm. to that there might be something they'd like even better once they see it. But visualization is not as common as we might imagine it to be. A lot of people can't tell what it's going to look like until it's done. Any other questions for Mrs. Mariano? Mrs. Mariano, thank you so much. Thank, yeah, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Would you like to be? Yeah, sure. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. We're at the stage of public comments, bearing the public <laughs> present. We will move on to the Don't treasurer's you know, report. It's Ron. Not me. It's Ron. Oh. <laughs> I fooled you by sitting there earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Ron? Mm -hmm. Your treasurer's your financial report. Oh. Treasurer's report. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Behind tab three. All right. Um, not much uh, outstanding or astonishing um, in the treasurer's report. Um, the bottom line is that um, some money came in because of the early payment of taxes, uh, but not uh, you know not huge amounts. Um, 
for those of us who made the early payments, I'm not even sure when the regular tax bills were due. I think, was it March? First. Yeah, yeah. March. Yeah, because so I paid mine in December. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, it's too soon for us to have received any money in the treasurer's, you know, that would be reflected in the treasurer report from those most recent bills. Um, you know, we're, you know, in our normal position, you know, we've got, you know, we're in a good position, a good financial position, and there's really not much we need to do differently uh, with that. The primary um, question or issue for us is to approve um, bills and salaries. Uh, I so move. Mr. So second. Roll call. Mm -hmm. Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee O'Loughlin. Trustee Barshes. Yes. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Aye. Okay. It's now time. Okay, for the landscape of plans. So I, I will motion that we 